Okay, so let's move on. Plane waves. This is the very last topic for the entire semester. So at this moment, um, I will first explain what a plane wave is. <laughs> then I see more than nine students here, so we can do a live demonstration. Plane waves. Plane waves are waves that propagate in a single direction. For example, I have a wave, electromagnetic wave, propagating in a Z direction. A plane wave means I have a huge, infinitely large plane. And here, Z is having some value of Z0. Then on each location, x1, y1, z0, x2, y2, z0, whatever, x3, y3, z0, as long as you have defined your propagation direction, for example here, z, then all these three points have the same z value, right? So they are on the same x, y plane. So whatever point you have, as long as you have the same z zero value, these locations are in phase, guaranteed. What does phase mean? Do you still remember cosine? Omega t plus phi, right? We talked about this phasor notation. So they're in phase. They have the same phase. Okay. So that's a plane wave. But if you have a plane wave, for example, I have a I, I am a plane wave, which means every point on my body are actually having the same phase. So you see an infinite plane propagating in a single direction, right? So mathematically, we might have different fields for radiation directions, but plotted, you have infinite plants propagating down to the right, okay? For example, positive z directions. Mathematically, this is from the Hampus equation, and if you have plane waves, the fields, although these fields are propagating into the z direction, the E fields can oscillate in both x, y, or maybe in the z directions. So now you can separate the Helmholtz equation, the vector equation, into three sets of scalar equations, depending on how the E fields are oriented. This one, the E field, is oscillating in the x direction. This one is in y, this one is in z. Okay? We only focus on this given plane. Okay? So here you have a plane wave. Plane wave, you only have one single propagation direction. And everywhere perpendicular to your propagation direction, point by point they have the same face. So for this one, scalar Laplacian of Ex, here we only focus on the E field that is oscillating in the X direction, plus K squared Ex is equal to zero. What is scalar Laplacian? Scalar Laplacian is nothing more than the twice differentiation in all spatial directions. But remember, plane waves, once we have defined its propagation direction, remember, okay, pay attention, plane waves, once you have defined its propagation direction, then the spatial variation is only that given direction. 
Why? Because as we said, everywhere on the X and Y planet, they are having the same phase. So you don't expect to have any variations. So all the variations comes from the value of Z only. So if you have a plane wave, it's almost like a one-dimensional wave, right? You only have one spatial coordinate that is varying. Of course you have the time variation, but once you have defined its propagation direction, then everywhere, all these points change in the same way as you change its Z value. Okay? So this plane wave, the E field is oscillating in the X direction, but it is only a function of Z. So basically, you don't have to care about this G. The function is reduced to partial differentiation to Z twice of EX plus K squared times itself is equal to zero. And that solution for was already covered in the beginning of our class. You have a forward propagating wave and you are allowed to have a negative propagating wave. Right? If you still remember, for our voltage wave and current wave on a transmission line, we expect to have forward and backward. Backward propagating voltage or current wave is due to impedance mismatch. So let me come back to the movie. Once you have the oscillating accelerating dipole, you can have forward propagating wave and you can have backward propagating wave. Okay? So when you are very far away from the dipole, this wave looks like the plane. Okay? So when you are far away from your wave generating source, you have plane waves. Now we know E field. What about the magnetic field? Well, you don't really need to go over the term derivation. We have this equation, right? So we perform the curl operation and we know the H. So take a good look how E and H, in terms of the amplitudes, are related. H and E, in terms of their quantity, is 377 ohms in free space. Have you encountered this value? in transmission line. Right? That's called the characteristic impedance. Z0. For back. And if you pay attention, if you have a plane wave where the E field is oriented in the X direction, your H field must be oscillating in the Y direction. So Z direction is where you propagate. Okay? So basically, a plane wave also conforms to the right hand wall. X cross Y, E field cross H, your thumb is pointing in the propagation direction. E, H, So E, H, K forms itself an orthogonal coordinate system. Okay. Right. So at this point, we're reaching the very last moment. I would like to have nine students, nine volunteers. Nine. Yeah, one. Well, I just come 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 to the stage. Please. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, nine. Okay. Yeah, please do that. Okay, stay. Starting from here. Okay. Okay. Facing towards this direction. Okay. direction, 
you can also have the reverse direction. Okay. So here you have the waveform generating source. It's also a plan, and you generate the plan of electromagnetic wave into the right and also to the left. Okay. So this reflects these two truths. So whenever you feel confused in the future, just remember how your classmates were sacrificing themselves to entertain you. Okay, that's a funny catwalk, right? So this is coming to the very end. Uh, if possible, I would like to have the three filming crews to stand up. The filming crews. Yeah, we need to thank their efforts. For the past, during the outbreak, they were here without the fear of being uh, Yeah, anyway, let's think. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so finally, I need to thank you all for, well, staying here. I know the first two or three months, you were not allowed to come into the classroom, but finally you are. Uh, as you can see, I really think electromagnetics is uh, covering a lot. And for me, it's not just math, but it's really having a lot of real applications. So my hoping was I gave you a lot of challenges, understanding about the concepts, and I also provided the linkage to real applications. Right? So thank you for the advice, Master. Thank you.